Hello everybody, it is Nat from Studio Hacks here, and today I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started making music in GarageBand for Mac. Beginners, this video is for you. You don't need a microphone, you don't need a MIDI keyboard, you don't need any kind of audio interface, all you need is a Mac computer to get started. Now GarageBand is a free application for Mac, and if it is not already installed on your computer, simply go to the App Store, type in GarageBand, and you can get that for free. Once it's downloaded, click on the GarageBand icon, and it will ask you to create your first project. Normally it will open the last project you've been working on, but since this is a fresh installation of GarageBand, we're going to create an empty project. You can also select from the project templates provided to you by GarageBand. These can be a lot of fun if you have a MIDI keyboard hooked up or if you're interested in electronic music styles or hip hop. We will not cover these in this video. We're going to create an empty project. One of the most important things you need to know in GarageBand are the three different track types. It will ask you to create a track when you open an empty project. We have three different track types, the software instrument, which uses a protocol called MIDI to trigger virtual instrument sounds. We have audio, which is for recording real world sounds via a microphone or an instrument such as a guitar or bass guitar. And we have a drummer track. Let's have a look at the drummer track first. When I hit create, it's going to create a drummer region for me and it's going to choose a preset speed for this track. Now the tempo of the song is how fast the song is in beats per minute. So this is called a region, this little block here. And up the top here, we have uh, the bars, bar one, two, three, and four. We can select different styles and different drummer profiles on the left here in the library. Now, if we simply go in and click on one of these, it will change the style of the drummer. Let's select a hip hop preset. You'll notice that some of these are grayed out. That's because these have not been downloaded yet. Uh, GarageBand puts out new content, new drummer profiles, new loops, new software instruments, all sorts of content uh, all the time. If you want to make sure everything is downloaded, simply go to GarageBand, sound library and select download all available sounds. Just be warned that these are quite big. They are in the gigabytes if you're doing them all at once. So if you have a slow internet connection or limited space on your hard drive, you may want to download some of these individually by clicking on the downward facing arrow. Now this region here can uh, be extended with the bottom left hand corner which will change the length of this uh, loop. Um, it can be looped on the top right hand corner and you can also make it shorter. I'm gonna make this four bars in length. I'm gonna also change the beats per minute here down to 80 beats per minute by simply clicking and typing in. Beats that you are given with these drum profiles can be edited in the editor down the bottom. The editor, uh, can, you can change by dragging this to the left or right. The, it will change the patterns of the hi-hats, cymbals, various drums. You can also change the kick, snare and claps. This will alter the drum beat. You can create more drum fills or less drum fills. And the editor can be uh, displayed by clicking this little scissors icon. The library here can be changed, uh, open and closed with this little library icon here. So that's a very basic overview of the drum tracks, drummer tracks rather. If we want to create a new track, we hit this little plus button here. Let's have a look at the software instrument. By default, it will load us up an electronic piano. Now you will need a MIDI keyboard hooked up to your computer to be able to play software instruments, or you will need to activate something called musical typing if you don't have a MIDI keyboard. Simply go to the window uh, menu item and select show musical typing. This way we can use our mouse or our computer keyboard to trigger the software instrument. 
Now I'm going to attempt to record a short performance by hitting this record button here and it should give me a one bar count in which will be four clicks. Okay, so I've just recorded some MIDI data using my keyboard. And as you could hear, the second chord that I played contain a wrong note and I wanna be able to fix that. So first of all, I'm gonna make sure that that loop is exactly the same length as the drummer region by just dragging this and it should snap when I get close. So it's right on. I'm gonna double click on this region and it will open up the piano roll editor. This is the MIDI editor. This is a visual representation of what I just played. Each one of these is a MIDI note and we can change the note that was played by dragging it up or down with our mouse. Or we can change the length of the note by trimming the length. And if we hold it in the middle, we can even drag it to where the note starts and finishes. This is called manual quantizing. And I'm gonna find that suspicious note here. Let's have a listen to see uh, whether I fixed up that note. Okay, and I'm just going to simply drag each of these notes right so they snap at the front of each bar so they are in time. And then this is a very, very quick uh, explanation of how we can edit the MIDI notes. If you want to change the software instrument on that track, you can do so from the library. We simply navigate through this menu. And when we have that, this track selected by clicking on it, and then we click on a new software instrument, it will load that instrument up on this track. And that's the great thing about MIDI. We can keep that performance and it's going to change the instrument. So that's now changed my performance. Uh, it's kept my performance rather, but it's changed the instrument to a grand piano sound. If we want to add some vocals or real instruments to our track, we sim simply select one of the preset uh, audio tracks. And then I can do the same thing. I can hit record. And if I have a microphone plugged into my computer via an audio interface, or if it's a USB microphone, I can simply record my vocals. We're not gonna go into that now. We're going to have a look at using loops. So I'm gonna delete this track by right clicking and hit delete. GarageBand will give you a bunch of loops. If we go on the top right hand corner and go to the loop browser, we're gonna click here. These are Apple loops. So these are um, various audio and MIDI loops, which are for software instruments. And you can see I have not, uh, because this is a fresh installation, there's a lot of these loops that have not been downloaded, uh, but we do have uh, some here. So these are all kinds of different instrument loops, drum loops, and uh, let's find a drum loop to add in here. So we can actually browse these loops via the instrument, the genre, or by typing in the search bar here. I'm gonna go to instrument. I'm going to select, uh, let's have a look drums. I'm going to select hip hop as the genre. Let's see here, hip hop. And then it's going to show me which hip hop loops we have here. So this gold one here is for a drummer track. The blue one here is for an audio track. And we should find some green ones somewhere. These are for a software instrument track. So there are none here, but we'll be able to find one in just a moment. So I'm going to click on this and it should play this beat for me. and I click on it again to stop listening to that. If I would like to use that in my composition, I simply click and drag that into a blank area underneath all my tracks and it will create a new track for me with all the settings of that loop. So this is gonna create an audio loop track. Now we can change the volume of each individual track with this little slider here. To the left is quieter, to the right is louder. 
let's have a listen to how that fits into this track. So I might want to turn my drum track down a bit and just use this loop a bit louder. Let's have a look at that. Beautiful. Now I think this track needs a bass, so I'm simply going to type in bass and see uh, what we can find here. Let's see if I can search via the genre of hip hop as well. Here we go. So it's going to give us some sub bass sounds. All right, let's try this one here. I'm just going to drag this in, see whether it fits my track. That seems to be fitting my track quite well. So I'm going to trim that down to the length there. Okay, so we have a drum beat, we have a drum loop, we have a bass loop, and we have a software instrument that we have performed ourselves. If we want to export this as an audio file and share it with our friends, we simply go to share, we select export song to disc, we give our song a name, and we select where we would like to save that. When we hit export, it will export our song. We can select the different types of audio files here. We can have high quality uncompressed, or we can have compressed music for smaller file sizes. So as a very brief overview, we had a look at how we can change the tempo. We had a look at the different track types, the drummer, the software instrument, and the audio tracks. We had a look at the editor, which is down the bottom, which you can use to change the settings. And when you click on different track types, the editor will change depending on what you have selected. We had a look at the library where you can browse different presets for the different track types. And we also had a look at the Apple Loops library where we can use loops in our music compositions. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to use the amazing music production software that is GarageBand. If you're interested in learning everything there is to know about GarageBand, I have a course called How to Use GarageBand, The Complete Guide. I will leave the link in the description to that course and I'll give you a discount for all my YouTube subscribers. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.